welcome. On this one, I'm going to be covering and uh, look at some VTech cordless phones and stuff. Not way more than I've got in front of you here, but I've just got basic small selection of the above. Um, pretty much VTech cordless phones, 2.7, 1.9, and 5.8 gigahertz related. And one of the seven is branded AT&T, but they're made by VTech nonetheless. The so same difference. Charging bases and main phone base. And when you open one up, of course, first thing you see before you open it up is there's a couple of holes which expose a couple of test pads inside. When you open it up, you find there's several more test points. And pretty much a sparse circuit board except for a 24 series I2C EEPROM e -E and a crystal switching inductor, power supply inductor. Till you open up this little cover, what we see here, an NXP arm microcontroller, microprocessor microcontroller, and it's a custom part number, custom series part number, the 24 series, I think that's what it is. Yeah, 27 series, 27030467, blah, blah. Custom series part number, it don't match up with any of the normal NXP part numbers, so. But, being a normal NXP ARM processor, I know it has flash ROM, flash EPROM in it. So, it's going to have in-circuit programming pins, if you could find which ones. And it has a built-in 1.9 gigahertz radio or transceiver, digital transceiver unit in it, which is, comes through the external amplifier and goes to the outside antenna here. And it gets has I2C communications, which it's taking information from this little EE prime. Considering the way that the phone's designed, I'd probably say that they have flash the uh, microcontroller first, and then right to the final packaging to do the final programming through this little set of exposed test ports on the back which I've traced them down and they only give connectivity to the external EE from here so that's probably what it uses for the uh, to retrieve the configuration data for communications with the base well Everything else is locked up inside the microcontroller where you can't get to it. I haven't taken the time yet to uh, take and trace down the pins and stuff to see if I can find an in-circuit programming port on one of these numerous test points here. But if you're lucky, it might they might not have the chip permanently firmware locked where you can erase what's on it but given these way they have the EE prime outside of it they probably have permanently firmware locked the chip so it might be a paperweight don't really know until you hook it up to a to a JTAG or ISP port ICP port and see what it comes up as if they've disabled it or not. The AT&T one looks to be about the same. Both an ARM processor with a built-in 5.7 I think is what this one is. 
re uh, digital radio on it with the little antenna on top. Same assembly pretty much with the 24 series EE perm and a switching inductor and the crystal. Except they have a few more test points exposed on the bottom. So that might offer a little bit more possibility. As I said, I'll have to have some time to dig into that to see if I can get to the uh, in-circuit programming port on this. Well, if you look at the base, already got the screws out. This hasn't even been used enough to take the plastic screen protector off of it. So, relatively light use. Let's pull this damn plug out. And, let me see, almost the same compliment, except for the stuff dealing with the POTS line. Except we have another, uh, besides the 24 series EPROM, we have another little chip with the, which I have conveniently put paint over top of, but I can't really see what it is. And another interface chip, but if we pop it open, this thing here. I have a feeling that's going to be another ARM chip. And that's what it is. NXP ARM. And it's pretty much the exact same unit as in the handset here. So they're pretty much using this prepackaged module as the guts of the unit and just dropping it into whatever device they want to use and since it has enough processing capability it can be used to run a digital answering machine or just the handset like this but all it is is the exact same part of the unit and I'd say probably this here is in it uh, a static ROM, static RAM or a flash ROM of some type for storing the messages and stuff on the answering machine. But there ain't much else in this unit besides the display and buttons, which is just an LED display. So that's pretty thin for pickings on experimenting except for the core unit which is the prepackaged ARM chip. And the only way to make use of that is being able to find the in-circuit programming port. And if the chip hasn't been permanently firmware locked, which, best luck with that. I might dig into it one of these days, but not now. Take care. Take it easy.